What's up, what's up? We're back with episode number three of No Labels Necessary. You know, every episode we get a little sexier, things get a little bit better. If you, you know, check Corey's background, I think it's a little bit smoother. Quality a little bit high, uh, higher, you know, skin a little bit more shiny. A little shiny more glowy, you know what I'm saying? In a good way, you know what I'm saying? You know, not too much Vaseline, just right, you know what I'm saying? So this episode, we want to start off real quick. Just let y'all know what no labels necessary means to us. We ain't gonna spend too much time being too deep, but you know why not go ahead and make that, an, you know, put put it in our words at the beginning. So Jacory, you know, uh, go ahead and drop that from your perspective. Yeah, man. You know, we've been a I would say a, a big proponent of the indie uh, artist space for the last couple of years, and so no labels to us is basically a double entendre one there's no label involved in the creation of this this has been out of your pocket out of my pocket you know what i'm saying these these are mics all tools our resources nobody gave it to us um but then also just off of the fact that you know i think as we've kind of evolved as like marketers and youtube personalities like we got different shit we want to talk about you know what i'm saying like it's it's hard to be labeled into like oh he's just the marketing guys you know what i'm saying these are guys all they know about is ads and I don't know, I can't think of nothing else. But all they know about is that shit, I right? Got life, man. Yeah. I got other interests, man. Y'all just want to hear me talk about one thing? No, man. I got kids. I got, oh, well, Corey don't got kids. Yeah, I ain't got but, kids. Yeah, I got kids. You know what I'm saying? I, I listen to as different as types of music. You know what I'm saying? So we just want to be able to put all that out there. But like Ja'Cory said, look, this is, we got this out the mud. Straight no, up. No, it was not, we, we didn't have like, you know, the craziest mentors in the game, putting money in our pocket, none of that type of stuff. So we're just as indie as the artists that we speak to. And, you know, for those of y'all who, who know, some of the things we've done, we've done some shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. no labels necessary. This is not the beginning. It's not the end. This is just another chapter, and we're glad to have y'all for this chapter. Now, with this being said, what we got? I got a clip. I remember I, I I said do not watch it, Corey, because I, I really didn't want you to watch this thing. Yeah, so that's new to me, y'all. It's just as new to me as it is. It's about to be to y'all. Shakuri, <laughs> I want to know what you think about the theory in marketing that you are not truly an- when you when you see this. Tell me. The the- okay. Theory in marketing that you are not truly an icon until someone can dress as you for Halloween and a stranger on the street will know exactly who they are. I have a theory in marketing that you are not. Mm, I've heard this theory before. I I feel like. Shout out to her. I love her page on TikTok. She's she's pretty far. Yeah, but I feel like I I I mean I agree with it, bro. It's like you're not recognizable if people can't dress up as you. Oh, hold hold up, hold up. Where have you heard this theory before? I don't think you heard it. See, this is the problem with information on the internet. (laughs) People forget where the hell they heard shit from. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this. This video up here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so who is going to set up my up LLC? Here. I want to introduce because, you guys to uh, Taylor Brand Shawty, right now. Taylor Brand is Shawdy the could have gave some props. I, I, I I'm not too big on like always <laughs> just blowing up people's spot, you know? But there's a video created four years ago, you know? Had a, a, a young, up, sexy individual who used to say bow a lot in the video. Oh, yeah, I remember that painting. Hey, yeah, yeah, she's over there now. And <laughs> every popping part... Artist has at least one of these, and it's the Halloween theory. Now, why am I sharing this? Because, to be honest, my and Jacory can confirm. There's there's some things that we put out in the in the the universes, the multiverses, and you can tell it's like, oh, they watch my video. You yeah. know what I'm saying that's cool. Somebody listening. <laughs> Something got me though. Something <laughs> got me this time because she said, "I have a theory in marketing." I have a theory in marketing. Like she made this up. She said, "Have you ever heard this theory?" I'm like, all right, cool. I don't, I don't need my credit. I don't need credit for everything. That's the way the internet works. But she said, I, and you got people looking like you came up with this genius. You you look this up on YouTube or anywhere, you ain't going to find it nowhere, but this video right here that pops up, and then I think you'll find it with her now. So um, all I'm saying, you know, I don't got no beef with you. This is the first time I, I found out about it. Somebody tagged me, and they're like, oh, yeah, Brand Man Sean had a video like this two years ago or whatever. You know, shout out to Four. you. Four. Uh, four exactly <laughs> Facts. got a jo bro it's actually four years ago you know what i'm saying just to let you know but appreciate you tagging me I hit him up earlier today so you know my my partner he, he he said he messes with you so there's no hate over here yeah, however, well, I, I love our page bro. How, however, <laughs> however amidst that love right don't let no hate simmer up 
like don't like, just give me some acknowledgement. <laughs> just give me some acknowledgement. But I just had to put that out there. You know what I mean? You know, I let I let a lot of time slip, but I'm not in slipping season right now. You know, cold. Yeah. I get cold and a little bit bitter, so I, I want <laughs> all of that. I want all of that credit. You know what I'm saying? And there is. There's some other things that we can put out like that, but that's that's not what we get a lot, bro. Now. I feel like I come across <laughs> at least at least something like that, like a once every like two or three business months. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> like you'll be listening to something, you like, damn, this shit sounds for me. He's like, oh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, bro. Exactly. Sometimes it be words you made up. I know, exactly. I know, I know for a fact because there have been times that I've said things that I no longer agree with, and I hear it being regurgitated. I'm like, oh, yeah, they definitely got that from, from old me. <laughs> they got that wrong yeah. information from young <laughs> like I look, Yeah, it's like I've learned since then that that's not the case, and I've moved past that. But you now you just get into it, so you with it, you know? Hey, man, uh, that's how you stay ahead of the game, man. You, 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 know? borrow, you, you borrow my trauma? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, so y'all got to watch Jacory. He be hitting y'all with, Jacory be hitting y'all with misdirection advice. No, nah, man, I'm just, a, I'm just an individual who accepts that he doesn't know everything and is willing to learn and grow as the universe grants me <laughs> with experiences to learn and grow. That's all, bro. That's I all. You know what I know. You know, so I, 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 which I feel like people appreciate. We don't sell ourselves as know it alls. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you know, yeah. we we like, hey man, I'm 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 cool to admit that I'm wrong. That's Being wrong means I got some more shit to learn. I like learning. That is a fact. <laughs> That's a fact, fact. And um, what that made me think of is so the wrong information. <laughs> the fact that. There's a lot of people that don't know cons- when they're consuming wrong information. And that messes yeah. the game up for a lot of people. Yeah. Right? Um, and appreciate, again, you. Uh, who was this? Is Victoria, is that her name or is she duetting somebody named Victoria? I'm going to throw her name out there. Damn, man. You about people on the spot. Oh, Coco. Yeah, okay. Ma, Coco. I'll just call you Coco. Look, appreciate you showing, uh, shouting out the clip. That is one of the truest theories out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and showing that love. And artists, if y'all don't understand that theory real quick, like just this, a great symbol, right, of a great brand is when people can make a do a Halloween costume and other people recognize that, oh, that's Drake. Oh, that's insert your name. That's Beyonce. They know who you're being because you made a moment so big in culture that when people see that outfit, that costume, whatever you're representing, and they know exactly who to so- associate with it, right? So 100%. That is something y'all should lean into. Um, another thing that's similar to that is POV, right? So you have a unique aesthetic that people can know about, but also your POV, right? The great artists, if you start saying something like Jay-Z, people are like, oh, that'll be something Jay-Z would say. You've seen memes where people mm-hmm. are creating Drake bars, mm-hmm. you know what yeah. I mean? And people know that it's Drake, yeah. you know, because yeah. like, oh, that's some shit, Drake. Yeah. They say talking to the stripper on the pole, trying to yeah. get, tell her to get off, you know what yeah. I mean? Ooh, wowsies. Exactly. What <laughs> <laughs> 100%, man. So it's like, whatever your perspective, when it's that deep, and that's where artists, you know, they... They create longevity because everybody can make. A lot of people can make songs that pop and have a moment, but when you get that, and and you can have multiple songs that do well yeah. in culture, that don't necessarily build your fan base. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas, yeah. like, oh yeah, I, I rock with a lot of this artist music, but if how can I connect to them deeper? I don't really know exactly the type of stuff they say what they care about, right? You know what SZA cares about, right? yeah. the type of bars and things like that. Yeah. So that's something that you want to be cognizant of. Like pop artists, like super, super pop artists can kind of get away with it. Yeah. But if you're something a little bit more niche, people would want to be able to, They that niche needs to be able to represent you if they want it to like make fun of you, basically. Get it made fun of is actually- A beautiful thing. It, right. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. And so many <laughs> artists try so hard to like avoid- uh, Yeah getting make fun of in campaigns and memes. Hey, all the biggest artists that you that you respect get made fun of. A man. lot too, bro. And it's like, it shows that people care. We don't joke about people we don't like. You can't even think of a joke for somebody you don't like or right. don't care no about. Energy. Yeah, no energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because, bro, I remember middle school. It was this girl. Mm-hmm. Apparently, shit, I thought I was being mean to her and like, I made her cry and shit. Oh, shit. But... I liked her. I, I thought we were cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't joke about people I don't like, for real. Like, yeah. because for me, my mentality is like, then it will be some problems. You know, I don't yeah. want to joke about you because yeah. then it's going to be like some real problems. I joke because you're my friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but she, I, I found out, I made her cry. I felt so bad. I felt so bad. But 
all it was exactly what you said yeah. you have my mental energy and i pay attention to observe you and i crack jokes because i care <laughs> yeah i heard it here first bro bully man sean first the brand man sean <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, there's a, there's a slight reputation there, just a slight. But it was, I'm I'm the most, uh, in, in not even involuntary, the most <laughs> accidental bully ever, bro. There's a lot of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of like wreckage and behind the scenes that I was like turn around like, oh shit, I did what? My bad. Yeah, See, y'all, uh, but it's misunderstood. That's all it is. Bro. Yeah, man. You know, going back, bro. We all grow. We learn. You know. It's all misunderstanding, <laughs> dog. It's like, man. See, if you only knew. <laughs> but and so we got another topic that I'm really excited to talk about because you know we've been watching this young fella. I say young fella. Uh, you know. Yeah, so, man, grown now, bro. Exactly. Not only is he grown, <laughs> he's probably like just a brother in terms of like my age range. But you know, this young fella. Little little yachty, you know what I'm saying? He has. Well, I don't even think we have to pull anything up on him. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna share the screen. Well, we don't have to really pull anything up on yachty because we already know what it is. So Poland, all right? Yeah. Poland's been having a moment. Hit. Hit. You you, you want to call it a hit? I, I think so. I, I, underground hit. Underground. I don't hit. know if it's gonna go all the way. I personally believe in it, but that's as a fan, not as a music person. Okay. That's the fan in me saying it could go all the way. You make a great point. <laughs> See, so, and I think Yachty alluded to this one time, or maybe I just made a video or something about it, but Yachty was a part of this. When you have, I feel like Coach K actually mentioned this somewhere. When you have a brand and people like you. Yeah, they want you to win. They want you to win. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you always have another at bat. Yeah. Now you might take some L's. And it's gonna be like, ah, we can't support it because it's just it's it's just not it. And it's cool that your fans are honest with you, right? But we still want you to get another one. Yeah. We're not gonna take that bad song or let that bad moment be what it ain't. But when you finally have something, we're gonna be happy for you and be just as as excited to support you. Right? I, I think that's a really really um, key thing where. Uh, it's just that long-term value of connecting to to the level of a true brand in a moment in time because it always buys you more visibility. How many of these people, it'll be like an old star that they now they can get on a reality TV show or something, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you have something. And we go watch it. Right? And people are going to watch we it. go watch it. Because we made that connection, man. Let yeah. me see what's up with Waka. What Waka doing? You know what I mean? With Soldier yeah. Boy. What is he doing? Like the People just pop up because we've already made that connection to those brands. So whether it's... To, into different arenas or in that same arena, whatever it is, there's always another day to live. Yeah. If you have a brand. Yeah, and it speaks to the personality thing. Like I said, it's like if you are a cool enough person, then people just want to kind of see you win. They want to see you mm -hmm. and not maybe go to the top, but as far as you can take it. Like I have a lot of artists that I don't particularly like their music, but they seem like cool people. So when they drop something, I go check it out. Yeah. And if it's nice, you know, I listen to it again. If it's not nice, I'm like, all right, well, I did my part. You know, best of luck to you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Hopefully you don't get shelved or whatever <laughs> you know, comes from this. And I feel like he's good at that, bro. Like Yachty has a, a I mean, just, as a Yachty fan, his personality has changed in a pretty interesting way over the last couple of years. But I feel like overall, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are, are you a Yachty fan? Like, were you following him pretty early? I followed him pretty early. I never thought of myself as a Yachty fan. <sighs> but I never thought of myself again. I just don't think it's <laughs> fan, like, period, in my in my mind. There's, uh -huh. like, all my the people I was a fan of, like, I used the word fan with, I was probably, like, 10-year-old old and under. Nah, man. After that, it's just people nah. I really, really appreciate. Nah, I don't, bro, I don't know. I'm, I'm just weird like that, bro. I'm just weird like I was that. At, I fuck with Yachty. That's what I say. <laughs> I fuck with him. That's what I say. I was at the Underground show. I think it was like 2018. Uh -huh. They're like him. It was like him, K-Supreme, and somebody else did. But K-Supreme broke the stage and like a, a shootout happened. And I was there, bro. I was, I was there early. You there? You yeah. almost got shot? No, nah, I was gone way before that shit happened. <laughs> okay. Like after I saw Yachty, I dipped. I was like, oh, it's time to go home. And then probably like 10 minutes later, you know, you got the call. You okay? You still at the spot? No, nah, what happened? Some shit. Shots rang outside. Oh, no, I'm about five minutes from the crib, man. I'm good. Thanks for letting me know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it means I left right in time. But I've been watching him for a long time. Yeah. So it's like really early Yachty. 
really, really, really early Yachty had this the scam personality thing. If you would in underground Atlanta, he was he was pretty. I would hear about that. Yeah, yeah. he's pretty well known for doing that. And then he got with QC. They flipped it and flipped him into like this, you know, childlike personality, this goofy <laughs> kid like guy. All of us watching like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, no way. But it was a good look for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he rode the whole. I want to call it a kitty brand, but that's a. What did he he put a, a name for it? Like I'm, bubble gum pop? No, not uh, that. Like he was like, I'm the king or I'm the savior. I think he even put an album concept around it, <sighs> like the team. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Come on, fan. <sighs> Come on, fan. <laughs> <laughs> we in the same boat, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's he's like the the the, the voice of the teens or the t- he, something like that, like yeah, that, something right? like I'm that, the yeah. Voice of I wasn't like a teenager that. when that when he was saying this. I, that's I ain't really, all I'm saying. I ain't really, see? I ain't I'm connect with that part. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? You my little bro or whatever. I think Ice Cube. I saw some Ice Cube <laughs> said when Kobe died, and he was just like, I'm I'm not a fan of that many people younger than me, and like Kobe was like, one dude he's a fan of. Yeah. But I think that's all I'm saying. It's just harder, you know, because no. you've seen certain shit. Yeah. But I rock with you heavy. I want you to win. That's. All I'm coming from. Nah, bro, I was a fan. Yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stray away from the title. I don't know, bro, you I was... lost some credibility. Y'all let us know in the comments that he lost <laughs> <man> credibility. <laughs> but it was, it was like, so he had the whole, the whole teen brand thing going, yeah, right? He did. rode that, and then he dropped, oh, damn, it's another, another, about to be another. He dropped this one album where everybody was on his ass about the cover art. And I feel like that flipped something in his head, and he wanted to get away from it. The whole teenage thing—it's like the Disney kid effect, bro. Like, yeah. like the Disney kids—they come out, they these nice, sweet kids, teenagers, whatever. And then, like six years later, they like twerking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the VMAs, wilding the fuck out. It's the yeah. same shit, bro. So Yachty flipped from the whole like teenage, you know, dream thing into hood nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which like, you got to go to the extreme just to break the mold, and now you got more space. Yeah, but it was like. I mean, I personally, I feel like rappers flip into like the hood nigga brand. That's like the easy way out. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's so many other brands you could have flipped. That's like the easy, obvious one. You know what I'm saying? 100 <laughs> percent way out. 100 percent. Very, very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, but but I guess it worked for what he wanted. He's probably like, oh, I don't want people to see me as this like child anymore. So like you said, what's the most extreme version of that? A motherfucker walk around with a gun that might fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get no more extreme. That, that was a complete polar opposite. That's actually know? true. With yeah. his, like, what options would he have had? Like. I don't know. He could have been like an intellectual. That that would have been the other option. Would have been interesting. That's hard to maintain. I would have loved to get like some book recommendations from Yachty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe he's hear his his opinions on the political landscape of the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See where things are. I, yeah, that's that's hard to maintain. You, know, you gotta you gotta you gotta stay smart in what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. And then people don't take you seriously because how you came in the game. And he could have he can't go super artsy because there's so many people that are artsy it doesn't even like stick the same yeah um, he's not weird enough to be super artsy yeah he would have had to go strict stream and buy yeah. that character so i mean i think i mean i think he he went through the door that was there for him. yeah i mean we got some bangers out of it like i feel like poland probably wouldn't have happened the same way if he didn't take that route and then i understand too it's like bro you signed to qc like everybody on qc is that brand but you like i feel like you around there all the yeah. time you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, bro, you know his early background enough. It's like, it's not like he was completely removed from that world. And especially like, you know, we hear shit just being in Atlanta. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you hear shit all the time. So it's yeah. not like he's all the way out of it. But I just felt like it was the easy, the, like too easy of a move to make. But it worked out. We got some bangers from it. Um, now he flipped it and then he got Poland moving. And like I said, as a fan, bro, I personally think, you know, Poland could, never mind. I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say beat out Taylor Swift, but never mind, bro. I'll take that back. So. <laughs> But Poland could go. I I believe that if they so, see what the internet sees, Poland could at least make it the to top twenty. It can go far. Yeah, one hundred percent. It can go <laughs> far. Um, like Poland, <laughs> I want to win big. Yeah, yeah, hey man, ain't nobody messing with Taylor. Um, and another thing about the Poland moment is, I wonder how he came up with it. Like, cause so I. There's something that I, I kind of call like, it's like the in the moment creative strategic marketing. Yeah. Right? So it's not super strategic, like I'm in a room and I'm going to make a banger for Poland specifically because I want X, Y, and Z to happen, right? Yeah. But there's a moment in time where I could really see Yachty being in Poland and just being like, man, I really fuck with Poland. I like this yeah. song about Poland, you yeah. know what I mean? Or yeah. my Poland 
fans really fuck with me. He might not be looking at the data on the charts, right? But he, as an artist, is maybe having that experience, right? And, and experiencing that, yo, it's really strong out here, and I get so much love and make that song. So, of course, you already know it's probably doing something really good in bowling for the people. 100%. You know? you but Poland is eating it up. Got to, right? Like the, the, the comments... Like on the meme posts around it have been gold, bro. I don't know what if you've you been. No, I haven't seen those. Like that's just, just fans are making. So it's just like I saw this one comment that was like, uh, what did it say? It was like, uh, Lil Yachty single handedly came to Poland and fixed our, our country's government. Thank you, Poland for <laughs> thank you, Yachty for saying. It's been like shit like that. Like people from like yeah. Poland coming like yo like Yachty came over here like just and changed the world. Did you ever see that one joke meme about um like Young Thug? Uh, helping out like a little girl, and then she later grew up to be Rosa Parks or some shit like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bro. It's like all the jokes have been like in that same yeah, yeah, vein, yeah. and it's been beautiful, bro. It's probably one of the the best meme. I don't know. I don't know if it was. I think it was a strategy. I think they did it on purpose, but it's been one of the best outcomes of a meme strategy. I think in a long time, bro. Mm-hmm. They they joke this man back into to super relevancy, bro. Like. Hey. See? Yeah, <laughs> See, this is why we trying to tell y'all the power of jokes, man. Yeah, bro. If you can type me and laugh at, you are gonna be alright. That's the game. That, that's part of the game. You just gotta sit there long enough for it to change, for the tide to change. You know what I mean? You see that wave and hop on it. Yeah, that that right there is. Like, we might have to do a whole like talk around <laughs> comedy and how that helps brands. But I want to go to this other clip that you sent me. Oh uh, yeah. I still gotta watch it. Like in whole, I don't know if it was, there was more to add. But man, yo. No, that shit's. Just a little bit I heard was hilarious. Funny and informative. So 50 Cent, <laughs> right, had some advice. I remember 50 Cent told Brown. I want to know what y'all think I about I remember 50 Cent advice. told me that. Hanging with 50 Cent, he was like, man, because he was always talking about, like, man, you got to make a hit song, you know, this and that and that and this. And I was like, man, I just want to be, like, artistic and, like, like push boundaries and, like, be progressive and, like, make exper- like experimental type music like that I never heard before and shit like that. Like, man, if you want to make music... Music, <laughs> he's like, if you want to make music that ain't going to make no money, then you might as well just make that shit for yourself and listen to that shit in your basement, because that's where you're going to be at. <laughs> Yo. Lots of words have never been spoken. <laughs> hey, man, y'all y'all let, shoot, he probably Uncle 50 now, man. Y'all let Uncle 5th uh, guide y'all to the truth, bro. 50 be dropping game. He need to write another book. He does. Yeah, he need to write another book. And his books are always, <laughs> you know, more like strategic series. Mm-hmm. But he need to drop like just funny game, like game yeah. funny way, because he got such a personality and the shit he say, man. Like, bro, have you? Do you watch Power? Did you ever watch Power? I watched a lot early on. Not anymore. Yeah. I'm I'm like a good couple of I ain't gonna say a couple, a lot of seasons behind. It's funny. I'm weird because I was one of the people who were opposite. Like I watched, I missed the first season, mm-hmm. three seasons. I never, I still haven't watched them. And I watch everything up from there. Or maybe it was the first two that I missed. I think that's why I stopped. End of yeah. season three was why I stopped. And it was, uh, <laughs> I never wanted to watch it, bro. My sister just, she she got me. She got me, <laughs> bro. But <laughs> it, it was one of those things. The 50 had one of these things. I think it was like to Tariq, his uh, buddy's son. So it's 50. I forgot his character name. Ghost son is Tariq. And he was like, if they say he did that shit, he did that shit. I can't remember the exact quote. I'm gonna find that. Like, EJ, bro, you are gonna have to put that up, man. Like, it's just, it's just <laughs> cool. It's the funniest thing, though, and, it, and it's truly Fifty Cent. Yeah. I think they're saying something like Ghost killed somebody, right? So if that's Tariq Dad, and it was just like, hey, yo, if they say he did that shit, he did that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, he said it so serious, bro. It's the funniest thing, bro. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna find a clip to show it to you. But like the advice <laughs> itself, man, we we getting off track. <laughs> The advice itself, man, like, that's how I really feel. Yeah, same. It's music business, People right? need to hear that, bro, yeah. Like, people really need to hear that. If you want to create something for your audience, oh, I just create music for myself. No, this is the music business, and the music business is within the entertainment industry. Yeah. And this is why I always say is the biggest benefit that comedians have that artists don't have, specifically music artists, and that is that feedback loop oh uh, yeah yeah if you don't laugh it's not funny yeah period and they take it as is now yeah. of course there's like stupid crowds bad crowds but like generally like, they kind of understand like hey if they don't laugh it's not funny. i'm here for the people i'm here for the people yeah artists <laughs> they can convince oh they don't get this shit man not ready it's deep y'all don't understand where it's coming from and it's 
it's this whole you know there's a there's the positive level of delusion that artists might think that they need to have at some level especially yeah. if they're doing something different but then you know there's a lot of people that no no you really need to hear that like you really shouldn't have been on american idol because you actually can't sing yeah you know let, let alone good music it's like bro no you actually can't sing because i i ain't gonna lie i used to think when i was little you know american idol, idol came out i was probably single digits or something or, or like right into the double and i'll be like man they probably put all these people on there on purpose so we can laugh at them but we can laugh at them. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I wonder if these people these people it's no way that some of these people actually think they can sing <sighs> now that i'm <laughs> now that i'm where i'm at the things that i get sent the things that i hear that didn't know that was a joke that didn't know i, I feel really like a, know. a lot of artists get i think they get the the love of the music like their love of the music their love of the craft confused with I guess what fans want to accept. It's like, just because you like it, just because you love it, doesn't mean that I as a listener have to feel the same way, right? I agree. And I don't know, man, I feel like that's a that's a real like mature moment for artists to, to be able to say like, okay, this is what my audience maybe wants from me, or maybe this is the type of stuff that I need to make to get me traction. And if they like that enough, then I can bring them back to maybe what I really want to make. Cause like you said, there's a very small percentage of artists where that is true for them. Like there, there are some people that's like, okay, maybe like you are a little bit ahead of your time. The music is still good, but it's maybe just different from what we're used to. Right. But then it's like the other 99.8%, it's like, nah, bro, you yeah. need to listen to that shit. See, that's, I mean, that's it right there. It's simple. Like meet me where I, I'm at, Yeah. you know, and then take me somewhere new, but you can't just start over there. I don't trust you. I need to. I need to know, man. Yeah, it's like you off in the distance, bro. I ain't yeah, trying to come over there yet. <laughs> I don't know you yet to come over there. Yet. What, you, what you holding? You yeah. know what I mean? Under that coat, I don't know. I don't trust you. So now that I trust you, you can take me somewhere new. Yeah. Show me the block, and man, I like it over here. And now you get credit, like you know, the typical Kanye use samples. Can't get more familiar than samples, right? Yeah. Outside of covers, but use samples. Very hip hop backpack. Then he does graduate, not graduation. 808, yeah. right? Took us somewhere after he connected, right? Yeah. So you can either do that, or you can stay in your corner and with your good music and just let it be for you, or hope, right? There's some people that they get situations. God just blesses them and makes it happen, even though you know they didn't do the work. And a lot of artists try to use those people's inspiration, but that's that is not. The anom the norm. That anomaly, yeah. That is the that yeah. is one hundred percent an ano anomaly. Most people have to figure out a way to hustle, be strategic about what they create. Yeah. And then there's some people who even you'll create music, and I'll create this other stuff as a throwaway, not as a throwaway, but I know I'm not going to put marketing dollars because the label isn't going to put money behind this because it yeah. doesn't represent the brand that they bought me for. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. that we're in partnership with. And you have to, you have a fiscal responsibility, so to speak. I don't, yeah. so I don't like it go with artistry, but in music business, yeah, I do. All right, so you have that, and then you have some people who they get off their they get their creative climax by saying, "Hey, this is my main brand, and this is what one of people want to hear from me." So I'll continue to sell this way. I might create something and just put it out there as a Lucy and let it happen, and then then I also might write for other other people yeah take right? that experiment energy somewhere else experiment yeah. so yeah let them do it and they get all that but at least i was able to get that creative itch out yeah and then yeah. you know somebody like drake every once in a while you'll see them collaborate with somebody in a different space it's and like them I dipping have, toes in the water yeah, yeah i got context yeah. oh yeah. why does drake sound like this well he's on this track with this artist so yeah. it makes sense so he, he doesn't get a knock for if it for as if it was his own song. Yeah. Right? yeah. So there's strategies and ways to go about it, but you can't expect any <laughs> I like it's hard to accept have anybody accept you for all of who you are. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah, it's like and you said something important too, fifty cent said it. I mean he he's not saying like you have to quit making music. You just have to understand like this ain't this might not go where you want it to go, right? right. Like it's it's like if it goes back to I think we were talking about an a older episode, but like consumer behavior isn't gonna fold or bend for you unless that shit is amazing. If it's amazing, we'll, we'll bend a little bit. If it's like yeah. less than amazing, which it could be great. Great music is less than amazing, but yeah. great don't always, you know what I'm saying, bend the culture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good music don't always bend the culture. Yep. Terrible music, damn sure ain't gonna bend, <laughs> isn't gonna bend the culture. 
and I don't know. I always feel like a lot of artists who like to use the the different excuse for like trash. That's me personally. It might be a hot take. What do you mean different excuse for trash? Like they like to say, "Oh, my music is different," so that's why people oh, don't understand. Oh, yeah, and it's yeah, like, no, yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. is really just bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not yeah, different yeah. at all. It's bad. 100%, 100%. <laughs> but I don't know if we have that contest because we get so much music. You know what I'm saying? We li- we have to listen to so much music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like I, I literally had a conversation with artists like, like, bro, you think you different? You the fifteenth person I've heard this week that sounds exactly like this. <sighs> Yo, I think that's something that I don't know how you escape that because as an artist, I feel like they have to believe that in some sense. Yeah. And maybe, you know, an artist y'all could comment on this, man. Like I think there's sometimes maybe what's in an artist's head. Right, it's more different than their output, right? Mm. And maybe you're not in a space where you have all the con- production, right? Or you know, guidance, collaborators to pull those things out of you. That's why collaborations are a real thing. I think people like sleep on the value of collaboration, being behind other, around other people to pull those tools in different ways to communicate things that you already got inside of you. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, you you felt different. And when your head and you were saying something different in your head, but it came out just like what I already heard, bro. You how different can you be when you got the beat off of YouTube? Yeah, yeah, and and I think it's like I guess situational context too. Like if I'm a Atlanta trap, or if I live in Atlanta and I'm surrounded by let's say Atlanta trap rappers, and I want to make punk rock music, I'm gonna feel different because my my media surroundings. I am different compared to my media surroundings. But then once you hit the internet, it's like, well, now you're not different. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's hundreds and thousands of, of punk rock artists that, that make great, amazing, really good music, right? And so then you go from, I guess, what is it, like big fish in a small pond to, to small fish in a big pond, you know yes. what I'm saying? Like as soon as you put it out. And so I think it's just kind of like artists get caught up in an echo chamber a little bit. Or not even really an echo chamber, but just like like just that, like situational context. Like I am different compared to my understanding of what is out there right. and my understanding of who is doing what. So I think it's easy to think that, but as I say, I think that's why we see it. What we see is because we hear multiple artists of different types of genre to know, like, yo, man, I ain't saying this to knock you. You know what I'm saying? You still make good music. You're just not as different as you think you are. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, and that's not that's not a bad thing because I mean, you can have ten people that make the same type of music, but one of them is gonna obviously be better. People are gonna obviously like one more than others. So it's not the worst thing not to be, you know, not to be super different. Cause being different today is really just being yourself openly. That's what I would argue. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's yeah. a true today where everything's kind of out there. It's, everything. It's hard to find yeah. different. Like different is so hard. So it's not even a knock on you, right? To be like, oh no, nah, it's not really that different. We've heard like literally. I mean, you the, what you said. I want people to know like Corey is literally talking about. No, I just talked to an artist that sounds just like just you. like, like you, this, bro. This, yeah. That is not a <laughs> <laughs> abnormal occurrence for us, right? <laughs> Um, but it's not a knock. Different is hard, and that's why when it's done on a high level, it gets put on a pedestal yeah. because it's hard to truly achieve different. Yeah, it should be hard. It's be hard. different and good. And good. Yeah, Ooh, that's that's yeah. a whole other so thing. A, right? that's, a, that's the magic combo. That's a, that's a whole other <laughs> thing. Let alone great. So I think because <laughs> different doesn't sell, and I think we think different sells. Yeah. Right, and we all want to be different because we've seen something different, right? That might have inspired us, but I don't think different is as important as authentic. Yeah, good point. Authentic sales. Different sales when we know you enough. Right, when we know you enough, yeah. different will begin to sell. Yeah, then you gotta take us to that place. But authentic can sell when the music isn't even all that great. You just have something to say, and it comes from a perspective, and it feels so raw. Yeah. That's what people are getting from Glow Rilla right now. Yeah, right. Yeah, it just feels authentic and real yeah right? that's why I, when people uh people love cardi on her come up all right you know you have all these people that put on these airs on their music or whatever and then they're just like this different person when they're in their normal life yeah and you listen to cardi you like but she wilder and when she regularly talking <laughs> yeah. that she is on the track yeah. <laughs> but, like she just be saying some crazy shit she sound funny she her voice is voice is really like that so i uh, Different isn't as important as authentic, and it goes back to what we said earlier, which is um, just that whole idea of your POV, right? Your perspective is the value. Last time when we went to LA um, on a plane, 
I was listening to, well, I watched a bad movie, and then I watched this master class. You know the the brand master class. Oh yeah, the little out the out thing. Yeah, I had never seen any of those before, but they had one on Howard Schultz. He's the CEO of Starbucks. I think he was actually the founder too, but I know he left and came back. He did like some Steve Jobs stuff, like hey, up oh, company go down, come back flex, show you how bad I am. Um, but one of his business tenets that he talked about was not being being so focused on being different and being more focused on disrupting. Yeah. All right. And the difference between different and disrupting, because people always kind of think, well, I'm going to do something different. I'm disrupting. But disrupting is anchored by what the norm is. All right. And so is difference is a contrast of what the norm is. But disruption is, hey, I'm going to give my unique take on something that already exists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like us getting on the same track, but you make a love song and I make a, I don't know, hood banger or something like that. Yeah. Or we both make a love song, but I do it from a hood voice and you do it from like more of a R and B voice where it's just like, what is your perspective on what's already happening? So if you can authentically cut through and give a, a, a unique approach to a genre that all already exists, like that's what you're seeing now when with the, um, what is it? What is it? The, the toxic R and B. Right. Yeah. Toxic yeah. R and B. You know, I, I had like an old person moment the other day where it just made me, <laughs> made me feel old. Where I'm like, this shit already existed. This ain't nothing really all that different contextually when you look at the lyrics and everything. And then you look at Trap Soul. Right. That was a flip of basically still just R and B. Yeah. Right. Then you look at Neo Soul, and I think it was an executive who really like marketed that whole thing and put these artists in a batch. We're New Soul to to. You know, say, hey, how do we separate ourselves? We ain't from, the temptations. R and B, yeah, we're not the. Hey, we definitely ain't the temps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we don't got froze. We wear temps. We don't got. We not the temps, bro. And so it was like, how do I not only market as something new, but also alleviate that that ooh, difficulty that comes with being compared to greats that have already been there. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It gives you more freedom because I reframed what you're consuming. You yeah. Know? So, though, if you can just take something and disrupt it by giving us a, a unique tweak, and again, of course, it has to be good. Can't go back to that enough, right? Yeah. It has to be good, but that's how you disrupt because we're used to it, so we can consume. But when another thing that happens when you're used to something. It's like a cover. A cover is the best way to describe it. Describe it. If you did a cover song and you sang your ass off, all right, because I know the song already, check it out. I pay more attention. No, well, not just that, right? But I pay more attention to you because I already mm. know the song, so I yeah. know the unique qualities you brought to the song. Yeah, that's a good point. But that's if I didn't point. know the song, it's kind of like I'm just hearing it all. You know what I mean? And that's why I think it's easier for artists to get attention, not only get attention. Um, with covers because we know yeah it's just something you, you're already used to but to get appreciation for their talent because we know oh dang he did this and they did that that yeah. was the norm yeah it was a preset bar for it, it pretty was much a preset bar yeah. so we have something to compare it to and yeah. you know, humans compare that's all it is so like well I don't want to harp on this too long because that that all came from the 50 <laughs> daddy route advice i didn't even know we were gonna be on that that long bro but you gotta see this is this is artist advice day because little baby all right i found this interesting little baby shares his thought thoughts on ice spice canceling book shows because her price went up i'm surprised you didn't see this check this out girl she's pretty cool I want to ask you about this. She was getting booked for three, four thousand dollars, right? They canceled all of them because the song blew up. You think it what, was that the right move? I don't. I'm not in the music business, so I don't know. Is that so? Like, if you get a song like Munch and it blow up, right? Your booking number is three, four thousand dollars. This shit blow up. Now you can really get a twenty, twenty five. You Do you up. just cancel them? You go, you go. You go on and still rock out. That's rock what out. I think. I, I what I would have right. We're gonna rock out because it's still only one song. Right. We don't care. Powerful. It is. It's still only one song. Powerful. And you need them promoters. 
we need all, uh, all that shit the same, like the street. Right. One promoter tell the next promoter, the next promoter tell the next promoter. Right. Everybody know everybody. Now, here's where the, this way you be, get innovative at. If I were her, I would have said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this show for 4000 but you got to give me two. the munch girl. Hey, hey, that was one of the most interesting clips I've seen in a while. First of all, I was actually kind of surprised that Lil Baby gave any kind of comment. Just because, you yeah. know, a lot of times street artists just like, hey, man, you mentioned somebody else. That name. ain't my business. Ain't my business. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is, which I respect, right? Yeah. Which I respect. But he, he, he cut on multiple different things, right? So I get it. Yesterday's price ain't today's price. We, we, we've heard that plenty of times. But we've experienced this plenty of times with, you know, paying an influencer or whatever. And yeah. all of a sudden situation change and now you want to up it $1,000. And it's one thing when they like, oh, after this campaign will go up. Yeah, that's but fair. we're talking about we already agreed to the deal and yeah. you're going to switch and you're going <laughs> to just not post. Sometimes we even sit the money over and you just, and you're like, oh yeah, you can give us the rest of the money. No, 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 no. Send no, us no. that money back. We'll see you later. Like if you would have did it when we paid it, we would have caught you before that happened. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because also it's like, hey man, look, and you're doing it especially on TikTok. It's like, bro, you're going to be hot for a month. Yeah. Now you're not. And then you come back to us. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all got some campaign work. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, hey man, keep your relationship. Just, so just like little baby said, man, like, one, it's the relationship that he alluded to, period, right? For, well, I'll say this. He alluded to the relationships of one promoter to another promoter, which is a very real thing. Those people have relationships. You got to remember. Yeah, very especially small Especially artists. Word. Look, the people in the business often have been in the business for a minute. Yeah. Right? So they have relationships on relationships because that's how they stay in the business a lot of times, Right. And so it's one, the one off promoter, which is a line of revenue for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And then two, yeah, you could be killing multiple streams of income, not even realizing it because you screw one person over. And now people are just watching like, oh, is he going to do me like that? I might take a chance on you, but it's a completely different energy. Yeah. And you have far less leeway. Like you don't want to, you don't want to take that away from you. And I get it. The bag is going up. We ain't seen money like this before. We trying to figure out how to make this money back, especially because I know a lot of that is driven by the managers. It's probably not just like Ice Spice saying that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, and maybe, hey, their clout, because I don't know much anything really about who's behind her like that. Um, you know, maybe they're like, hey, we're so good with where we are, we can do stuff like that and not care. Yeah, but then it also kills a lot of the, like, the core dynamics of being a new artist. Cause it's like, here are all these shows you got booked. I mean, we saw the the jokes about her rolling loud performance. You know what I'm saying? People comment on the fact that she's not a great performer. So like, I think it goes back to another conversation we had about, is there other value in this opportunity outside of just the money that you might be getting? Yes. Cause the value in that would have been like, hey, I ain't never I ain't never performed before, right? I, I haven't performed. Let me knock out three, four, five of these 4K shows before I have this rolling loud performance that's gonna mm. basically put me on the big stage and people really gonna be looking at me, right? And then there's the, like, I think it goes back to how smart the team is in terms of, like, do they know what to do to flip that attention? Right. Um, because I don't know what that last guy was going to say, but I'm pretty sure he's going to say, like, maybe she should have negotiated, like, a, a ticket split or something, like, on or maybe a percentage of the, the door or something on top of whatever. So, it's like, that could have been an opportunity they could have took it. They're probably, that would have been pretty fair yeah. to, like, a, a, a respectable promoter. Um, could have fucking sold merch. So, if you brought up more people than you thought you were going to bring, they could have bought stuff from you. You right. could have push these people to some online shit you got moving on. But then most importantly, it's like, you are a new artist with a viral song. Like you, the most important thing for you at this stage is building relationships, not just with the, the, the back end people, but with all these people that came to see you. Because all these people that are coming to see you are trying to decide, do I like this song enough and you enough to continue paying attention to you? Yep. And so it's like, I don't know, let's say she had five shows for four thousand dollars, it's five opportunities to win over different people. You get a knockdown. I think she was asking like twenty k. The, the rumor was what she was asking like twenty, twenty five k or something. Yeah. So it's like okay, now most of these promoters probably aren't going to pay that yet because you're not as proven. But let's say you, you know, let's say you get two, three of them, right? 
Um, that's two, three chances for you to win people over when you could have had eight, 10, 15, 20, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. And just right. been, just been knocking out. And, and I think it's a, like a long term mentality. And yeah. going back to what we say, bro, like, as ours is like, if you feel like you're not going to be here for long, then yeah, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Get as much as you can get. get the better, right now. <laughs> See, this is where we go back to goodwill and the confidence yeah. of having a career or not. Because when you have a, feel like you're going to have an extended career, you're more apt to build goodwill, which is. I don't need to take every single dime off the table. Yeah. You know, it's like, all right, I leave a little bit on the table because I'm building and I'm going to cash out bigger and bigger as I go. And almost the game becomes, I want to leave a little bit more on the table. Yeah. Right. So if I always take less than there actually is, there's always something. Right? Yeah. Now you owe me. The deposits. Right. You yeah. owe me. Yeah. Right. Whether that's a, from a fan base standpoint or, you know, just goodwill within business. Right. Person to person. But that's essentially what's happening. And I saw so one of these comments. She said, nah, th- she doesn't even have her stage presence down packed to even raise anything, which goes down to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So what can you demand because of the song, right? And what can you, what value do you actually produce as a product yeah. on stage, right? And it's one thing, people feel differently about a bad performance on a 20k show than they do on a 1k show yeah and there's a couple people in in the you know out there little room even feels different you can have a worse performance but still not feel as bad not bomb as bad and this is without me seeing any of her shows you know this is just based on the commentary and the conversation is more important to me right yeah um, you ain't missing much but <laughs> like, people don't like practice bro yeah that's really that's really all that should have been that was just practice and I mean, it goes back to, to the uh, paid practice, bro. That's the most important part of it. And it goes back to the comedian thing you said earlier, but like comedians will go do comedy yes. clubs with 100 people in it to get the joke right. So when they step on this, you know what I'm saying, step on this stage with 30,000 people in it, that shit is perfect. That yep. shit is tight. Yep. So I feel like it's only in music, bro. People are like, man, I don't need to practice, man. I'm going <laughs> to be all right, man. They came here because they think, which is still true to some degree, like, yo, they're here for me no matter what. And it's like, no, we are here to see you do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> we are not just here for you. We are here to see you ideally kill it, right? Yeah. So I can I can say I have fun. I got some good memories. Get some good pictures for the gram and shit. Yep. And it's like now not now now you just taking that away from me as a fan. You know what I'm saying? Like you just robbed me robbed me of a good experience. But I don't know, man. I, I just think that like I always feel like the fan building aspect of a, a artist, well, the, an early artist career is the most important part than the money. Because like look at how many artists we've seen nickel and dime in their way. You know what I'm saying? For three, four, five years, and on the sixth year, they just really blow the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Then they, then they get, you know what I'm saying? Quarter million to I don't know, maybe millions of show or something like that, depending on like how big they are. And that's a result of all the work they've been put in. And even those artists that don't make it that far can't demand a type of attention. They're still good two, three, five years beyond the moment happening because they took those small opportunities to make sure they were gonna be straight in the right. future. You know? Right. Yeah. I wanna. Talk about Kanye real quick. Yeah, you know, I know that's a touchy subject <laughs> to talk about Kanye these days. But I think there's some important things to be said. So we're not going to get into some of the Kanye conversation, but what I do want to talk about is this part of it right here. So I'm you know, read this article, and it says, <sighs> this is the craziest part. You know what? I'll, I'll, let's skip to this. He doesn't have the Adidas deal, right, yeah. anymore. And what he lost Gap too, right? Yep. All right. So just days ago, the rapper, what the rapper come fa- oh, rapper who writes stuff like this? The rapper come fashion entrepreneur Kanye West <laughs> challenged Adidas to drop him following a weeks long barrage of anti Semitic remarks made on social media and in national media appearances. Right? Blah 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 blah. Guess what? He gets dropped. Now, let's start with this headline: Billionaire no more. Kanye West. Anti-Semiticism obliterates his net worth as Adidas cuts them ties. Now, it's a couple of different angles, but let's start here. The one main reason I wanted to like, even bring this up was because I saw Nori did the interview, the Drink Champs interview with Kanye, right? Yeah. I did not see it, but Kanye said some wild stuff apparently because then Nori had to go on an apology to it, right? Yeah, and take it down. Oh, see, I didn't know it was taken down. Yeah, he took it off his channel. Oh, and you can still find it on YouTube if you search hard enough. Yeah, but like, no, nah, he took it off his channel. Yeah. Oh, dang. 
<laughs> all right, so it's even worse than I thought, <laughs> right? And like my thing is initially you're just thinking, oh yeah, Kanye said some wild stuff, right? You know, and it makes sense. It all makes business sense, but like, oh, he said some wild stuff, and now he has to apologize for like put uh, having on his platform, and people are like, oh, Nori got scared, as if he was responding to the the media online not the media the people in the comments everybody just hating on them talib Kweli, da, 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 like just not hating on them but you know just against what was said so i see that but then joe budden i actually saw a clip with him and it clicked for me because i had only been consuming that side of things but and i still hadn't watched the clip but joe budden was speaking from an angle of a hey, man when things like that happen like it's like nori them calls that you get Right, uh, like this company, like your pod is in partnership with Revolt. Revolt's in partnership with this. Was it mm-hmm. the, the, the sponsorships for your podcast? And I'm like, oh man, money. I did not think about Nori losing money mm-hmm. because of this. All right, or the potential to. It was like, ah, oh, yeah, I can't. I gotta apologize. I can't have my people and my pockets yeah. <laughs> in failure mode at the yeah. same time. Right. Yeah. So, because obviously the people were against them. So it made me think about how today we're in a day where artist man like their awareness when it comes to partnerships and the things that they can say on platforms this is just a literally a different time you know what i mean it's, it's it's really different but then of course you go back to kanye west and it's it's crazy how fragile things like net worth are all right and these things that we big up and and i didn't want to say it in the moment because you know people always kind of consume your hating or something but I'm like, when he would be saying he has a higher net worth and he's richer than some people, I'm like, it's not the same type of richer than some. Like, mm-hmm. We're talking about paper, and it's because of a big contract from Gap, yeah. a big contract from Adidas. That's And a contract is different than, you know, my business is worth certain. Yeah, certain we, amount, we saying right? firsthand those contracts are fragile. Contracts are fragile. Yeah. Hey, he knows because he done broke them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like, hey man, may- maybe these contracts outside of the music industry <laughs> they're a little bit weaker. You know, the, the music industries, boy, them things ironclad. That stuff the labels do, but the that right there, it's like, dang, bro, you lost. I mean, you're not a billionaire just from a couple moves, and I, you know, he gonna be straight, whatever, bro. You got, you'll be alright. You know, there's plenty of people who gonna follow you no matter where you go. You know, yeah. uh, he's big enough to have sheep. <laughs> yeah. you know, every every icon has sheep, but it's really interesting because he's gone this path of partnership after partnership after partnership, and you know now I don't know if you saw when he said oh, Sway was right or yeah. Sway had the answers. Yeah, I did see that. It's just like, huh. I was like, but that doesn't go in line with your whole, I don't listen to anybody who has less money than me either. All right. Like, and I, you know, and that, but we all fall for that too sometimes. Yeah. All right. Where it's like, oh, you have to be ultra successful in this thing before I get any advice for you in this thing. All right. And I think there's truth to that, but there's also a nuance. Cause I remember talking to my trainer and I'm like, do you think, what, how do you feel about only having trainers that are like really swole or in shape mm. and, and you can't be a good trainer without it? He was like, no, nah, that's not true. And this this is a very in shape guy, but he was like, there's a lot of people who are just good for themselves, but they don't know how to actually train somebody else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a completely different dynamic. It's a completely different skill because one, everybody's body is in your body and then your pain threshold or what you're willing to do. Yeah, people a, got different goals. It's a complete different goals. Yeah. All that stuff is different. And it made me think about to honestly us, right? As a marketer, right? Like we see 5011 situations, all right? All these different types of artists, different types of genres, bad artists while they're bad and helping helping them as they become better, right? Um, in their own development. Yeah. Artists who are already popping at a certain level, helping with certain things. We've seen so much. And sometimes I've seen some artists have their singular success for them. And it could be great, like a great level of success, not even like fronting on it, but then think their path applies to the rest of the world. Yeah. And other artists will buy into that. Oh, I'm going to listen to him because he did this. But it's like, yeah, but he, you're not him. Yeah. You don't have his charisma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or you don't have his work ethic. Or yeah. you don't have the ability to 
mix master like Russ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's there's so many different situations. And I think sometimes artists, rightly so, pay attention to successful artists, right? There's an allure to it, but just because they swole don't mean that they can help you get swole. Right? Yeah, and I mean, and going back to the, the different goal thing, it's like sometimes if this person is so far ahead of you, they don't even, they can't even remember how to relate to where you are in your exactly. position, right? It's like it's like if you're an artist that just started making music today, like the worst person to ask for advice on how to blow would probably be Drake. Drake, you know what I'm saying? It's been 10, 15 years since he was an underground right. artist. He don't know what to tell you. Hey man, I don't Climate know, man. Call your label and tell them to put up a marketing budget. That's what you need to do, bro. You're like, what? You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, there might be this artist who maybe is not as massively successful, but is four or five steps ahead of you. And he he or she can more closely remember like where they mm-hmm. were in your position and give you good advice that can right. help you get to where they're at. Like, like, yeah, I might not be able to take you to a 10, but I can get you from a one to a four. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to four, you in the game, you can start figuring out yourself, make your own path, all that stuff, you know? Yep. And I don't know, man, I just always go back to the gold things. I, I remember thinking about like, um, like the mastermind thing we did, and, you know, the Sam Sam talking about how like, you know, like I don't want this, you know what I'm saying, 100 or whatever super massive business. Like some of the people I've coached, you know what I'm saying, like he's, he's proven it, like, bro, there are, people, oh, yeah. there are people I put in the world that make 10, 20 times what I make because that's what they want, that's not what I want. So it's like it could be easy for us to go like, oh man, you ain't making thirty million a year. Well, I'm gonna listen to you. It's like, well, I have the ability to do. It. I just don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I got I got different goals and a lot of artists following that, bro. Like so many artists are like, yo, you might say like, man, you're not number one on Billboard. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You didn't have a top, a number one album. Why would I listen to you? And it's like, man, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I have the resources to possibly do it. I just that's not what I want. I don't want to have to play that same game that those artists have to play. But then the small artists looking like, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. It's like, no. Nah. Yep. Got different agendas, yep. got different goals. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And I took a left where you might have wanted to take a right, but that yeah. that left was good for me. And there's just some personalities where it's like they're just not good for the teaching. Right? Yeah. Like a lot of artists, like they want to pay attention to themselves. They need to pay attention to themselves. So it's hard to give true. Sometimes attention they don't to, know to that other product, and they don't know. Yeah. Sometimes some well, some of them especially. Um, from a more label era, yeah. Right? It's like it was so much going on around you that had nothing to do with you, right? It was for you, but it had nothing to do with you, right? In terms of you didn't you weren't involved in the process, little things. And then we know a lot of artist manager relationships where like managers are protecting, right, from hearing certain things, yeah, and, and certain lines of communications and things. So artists are receiving filtered information, and that's not even to their fault sometimes because sometimes people are doing it because they, you know think that's what the artist needs and then of course there's people doing it maliciously but like there's some who just like nah it's better for the artist and their emotion and keeping better emotional state so you have to be a pretty even headed person yeah. when you get information for them to continue to do that otherwise you're like ah it's probably best I don't overwhelm them or, yeah. or offend them. blow the whole spot up yeah blow yeah. the whole spot up nuts <laughs> next thing you know they can't perform for the show in three hours yeah. right yeah. so like it all makes sense but and you know Sam is different too cause you know it's like Sam, I'm like I don't want to make my more any more money than this this way. He's like, yeah, I went to thirty five million a year. I decided to go down to six million over here, but I'm building this like future billion dollar company. Over yeah. Here. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like it's a, it's a different. But I'm not. Yeah. But you can look at oh, you're not making this amount of money this way anymore over here. Yeah. Cool. But again, like you said, I applied it to how I wanted to. I, mm-hmm. His, his life seems so relaxed. You know exactly, I mean? bro. Exactly, bro. Like, <laughs> well, he got like a four person team, five person team, or something, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get to this from Kanye West, but like to even bring that like back full circle, you know, I think like Kanye is in this really interesting spot right now where I think many of the people who are still acting as if everything he's he like he never does anything or says anything questionable right Mm -hmm. there's still there's still some of those people left but uh, many of those people especially the ones who are artists still don't recognize how unique his scenario is you can't follow that path yeah it's just like and i know you're inspired by it (laughs) because look at him doing x y and z but i I, it's cool to also see hey there's some consequences because I think people have only seen the allure to it and don't understand what it what it comes with on the other side of it at, at the same time. If, you, if you're if you about that life for real, for real, of I'm going to just say and do whatever I want to. Like yeah. Kanye has been, bro, he's so intelligent with his positioning 
because to me, bruh, and maybe because, you know, I, I market, but I see him as a marketer first, damn near. Yeah. And like, I, he would hate to hear that. Oh, I don't like marketing. You know, him and Travis, bro, they say the same bullshit. Oh, I don't like marketing, but y'all market. Y'all that's all you do. Y'all the best marketing motherfuckers I've ever seen. But that's one of the best things to say. Hey, I don't market, bro. Shit just happens. Yeah, it just happens. So you feel like it's all from this great inspired place, no intentional planning, but the shit is so specific and detailed, it's, it's no way that this is not planned. Yeah. The, the, everybody's called out your <laughs> your formula. Oh, album coming out and the, you're starting to do X, Y, and Z type of things. That's pretty clear. You're not doing it for no reason. Yeah. Right? So there's a formula that's always been there. And to be pop, right? Kanye compared himself to Michael first, like Michael Jackson. And now he compares himself to whoever's big at the time, right? Yeah. Bad Bunny, I think you were the one who told me about that. Somebody told me he compared himself to Bad oh, Bunny. No, I ain't, that wasn't me. Yeah. I ain't hear about that. That's it's crazy. Like, hey, whoever's hot, the hottest person <laughs> in your mind right now, I'm them. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was. That's such a wild comparison. Bro, because whoever's the top, <laughs> whoever's at the top, bro, I want to be right there with him. Steve Jobs, Bad Bunny, Elon Musk, like whatever, right? <sighs> um, <laughs> That's such a crazy comparison. Uh, but <laughs> that made me lose my thought. But <laughs> hold on, where was I? Damn it! Um, great marketer. Oh, great yeah. marketer, right? Yeah. And one of the best. So, if you want to be pop, right? The best pop. And Michael Jackson, he was such a genius marketer. Yeah. And he doesn't get credit enough for it. And like their ability to one take things from other places, because Kanye West, like right, forever, has just been like. Hey, I'm gonna take it from some other place and then be the one who gets clout for it by introducing it, right? It's not that he doesn't bring any innovation, right? But he's not necessarily an inventor, right? He's not necessarily the craftsman in area every area that he gets credit in, right? Yeah. Which is fine, right? He's a producer, right? A EP in many ways. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um but that was what Steve Jobs said. Like he had that quote, right? I don't play an instrument, I play the orchestra. Like when the cold is ass, that's a cold yeah, ass quote. a cold ass quote. Damn, yeah. That's, that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at Michael Jackson, bro, you look at all the stuff he did. Like, it's literally the playbook for decades to come that people didn't even get a chance to truly capitalize on and start capitalizing on until like now. Yeah, because social, they didn't have social. They, they couldn't spread. You really look crazy because it's like, what are you doing this for? You look crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so. The understanding aesthetically of branding, right? Yeah. We know the glove, we know the hat, we know the de- like the postures that he would do with certain dance moves, kick up the leg. There's so many single parts of his brand that you know would be Michael Jackson. You want to talk about a Halloween costume, right? And just or someone, it could be a swole dude that looks nothing like him. You know what I mean? You got the hat on, you know. Got the hat on, you know. <laughs> got a glove on, you know. Yeah. He just does a kick, you yeah. know. Does does this, you know. Yeah. Does a thriller move, and you know, right? And then collaboration. He's done this in multiple videos, but the one that like I think is most known and clearest to see was some other videos. It's ridiculous. So I don't even know the name of the song. But the Remember the Time, the one where they were in uh not Miami, though <laughs> he was a mummy, right? When they, they were in Egypt, that's what it was. They were in yeah. Egypt, there's the king and the queen, and like he comes up to uh perform for the king and the queen, and he tries the king by like Flirting with his girl, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? They turn into some dust and disappear, so they can't they can't get him right. In that video, you got Magic Johnson. You got so many different people. I think Arsenio Hall's in that one. But he has like person after person after person, type of people that were not anywhere near that industry. So many collaborations. The We Are the World collaboration. Like now, social media era, people are like truly understanding the impact of collaboration. He was doing it where it was like solo. Yeah, you know, if you look at the references, there's not many people in that era that you see that collaborate to that level on that scale. Like pulling people from all these different spaces and places that to collaborate. In. So it's just it's, it's it's really interesting to see. Like, I mean, he was like studying clothing in Japan and then integrating it into his like suit, and, like little bands, like all these little things. Like the moonwalk wasn't his dance. He Took it and introduced it on a pop scale. Wait, for real? Yeah. I know that. No, that's not him, bro. Oh, man. He's not the, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Like, genius marketer, bro. 
he's a marketer. Like, he's a true artist, too, producer. Like, you know, they will say great artist still. Yeah. Yeah, like, like what kind of be doing all the time, he will take it, maybe in some many cases improve it to you know to be fair but present it in a on a on a larger scale in a in a great fashion and get it going and that's what pop is and i feel like you know they call michael jackson the king of pop i don't know how much pop existed before michael i feel like from my reference point then like you know young person study of history without like reading a scholarly article on 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 history of pop Michael Jackson seems like he almost like invented mm. or validated, <laughs> validated pop and made it a, a, a legit genre. Oh man, I, mean, I know where you was going with that. Hey, no, 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 <laughs> I, hey, I don't know where you thought I was going, but no, he feel like he made it almost like a legitimate genre to continue to chase. And just like in basketball, they're always chasing Michael Jordan and trying to find a next him because of the marketability, the success of it, all that stuff in the marketing machine that it is. From a capitalism standpoint, people were chasing. Oh shoot, we need another pop star, pop star, pop star, because he Michael was taking rock and R and B and all these things. And okay, yeah, like, okay. okay, that was they were calling <laughs> him the king of pop for a reason. When back then, I mean, I feel like now it's more. There's a it's more generic and people don't care as much. People don't. I want to say uh, care as much. Like there's a, a almost a negative stigma on pop now and i'm sure there are people in those individual genres that probably were against michael right and sometimes like if it was like your genre that you care about like everybody else love it but man that's not real rock or that's not real whatever yeah i'm sure there was some of those people that existed but the reality is you know pop was legitimately by definition at the moment popular music yeah right? yeah so yeah. it's like how can you how can pop be anything bad if it's just if it's like just popular and popular is because a lot of people like it right but now there's a formula for pop right and it became is like a true genre which then you know now it has a stigma it feels generic it's less sold to it yeah wherever you're coming from but no anyway man like michael i we could do a, i could do a whole like <laughs> breakdown but like that dude marketing wise the shit that he was doing like yeah, bro, I'm still fucked up about the moonwalk thing. That's crazy. You, you didn't, man. I really didn't know that, did bro. Know, I did not know he, that. He, he, man, he did <laughs> not, dog. He really did not, man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I remember when he found out. When I found out, I had to, I had to cope a little bit. I'm like, dang, that's, that's crazy. By the way, fun fact for y'all, you know, Michael Jackson did the moonwalk in Pasadena for the first time. You know, uh, oh, shout yeah. out to Urkel. Yeah. <laughs> we did just learned that. Yeah, Urkel got all the facts, bro, about <laughs> <laughs> things that happened in Pasadena. Um, so here's the next thing, though, what we got to talk about, man. BTS to do military service in South Korea. All right. One, this is crazy. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick little reading for some of y'all who don't know. For, one, BTS is a massive k-pop band i first learned about them probably like 10 years ago at this point and they just been killing it and finally crossed over hit a whole whole nother level for k-pop music by like within the last like two three years yeah. like getting awards above american artists in american award shows stuff like that right so here's the article the seven members of bts one of the world's biggest bands will perform military service in their native south korea their agency has said ending a long national debate over whether they should receive an exemption while many fans of the K-pop sensations were hoping the band members would be giving special consideration due to their contribution to the South Korean economy and international prestige, the artists will serve almost two years in the military. It's a long time. That's a long time. And well, I know you had some thoughts about that, so I'm going to let you, you go off on this. Yeah, so my first reaction to it was I was like, man, I kind of hope they Elvis it. You know what I'm saying? And, and dip. And I was like, nah, the South Korean government probably don't play it. And I actually think that article goes in detail about a couple of other um, South Korean celebrities who tried to kind of escape it. Oh, really? Yeah, they talk about, um, I can't remember, I think it's a composer or something they talk about where like the guy tried to get out of it by getting US citizenship. And then as soon as he oh, as soon as oh. he touched foot back in South Korea, they, they got him, bro. Ooh. They set him up. But I had a conversation with uh, with Sam the other day, and Sam, it was weird because I was like, man, this is like terrible for them, like, bro, they're gonna be taken away, like you said, at the 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 peak of their career, they're just starting like super super crossover, right. 
And he was like, nah, I think it's going to be great for him. And I was like, why? He's like, bro, think about that comeback album, like when they drop it. He's like, that shit's going to be massive. And I was like, and I was like, man, it goes back to last week's conversation of building up a narrative, bro. Like building up a really strong narrative that's going to make people buy in. Um, it's only two years, so that's not the longest. Yeah. Right? And, and, the longest. and I'm sure they're, they're, some people take two year breaks. Yeah. And I'm sure they're not going to put him in like any like real danger. You know what I'm saying? Like I read another article that, you know, you know, like any military, you can have different jobs within the military. You can be having different skills. And they, they are a national, uh, international commodity at this point. I'm pretty sure that the, their government isn't about to fuck bro, that up, bro. Commodity. I think that was you who told me it was like they was like they're responsible for maybe a billion, two, three billion yeah. a year to the yeah, South to, Korean economy. Yeah. They're not gonna let them get touched. Nah. They're not putting them in nothing. They nah. be like, hey man, you go be a teacher somewhere. You go be like a, a graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold, let me let me see what their GDP is, man. Oh, uh, well, hey, it's still in the trillions. That's that's a whole nother number. <laughs> yeah, it's still a lot, bro. Yeah, that, that's still a lot. That you know, but still three three billion. Let me let's see if we can. Do you remember the exact number? Of- nah, I, th- I think it was like two three billion. And this was like a while ago when we had that conversation. So, yeah, I'm sure it's grown by now. Okay. And then plus, bro, like if something happened to BTS, bro, like K-pop fans everywhere were right. I got it. So it says, well, how BTS is adding an estimated five billion to the South Korean economy. Yeah, right? they're, not, they're not getting so, rid of that. They're not letting that get that's touched. That's a number. <laughs> that is a number. And it's not just them, right? Because, you know, you want to think of the government. Well, why is the government as a whole? Especially if the GDP is still one, one trillion, like five billion is big, but what is that to one trillion? Well, actually, that is actually very significant. Five percent. That, that is as a significant number. Yeah. Five percent. Well, five, no, five billion? Five percent. Of a trillion? Yeah, a trillion? No, that's probably more like 0. 0.5 Yeah, you're right, actually. But it's Math significant. <laughs> it, it is significant. And... <laughs> You gotta think about the people who are the primary benefactors from that. Yeah. So somebody's losing money. Yeah. Like big money. Let's just say their record label. I don't know their full situation, but let's just say it's their record label and they're getting bank, of course, because they're directly related to it. So you talk about that percentage of Korean GDP, but the record label, this might be eighty percent of their shit. I don't know. I'm making up a number. That person, and also to have that kind of money, you got some clout within political landscape yeah. that person will be like hey man I done did too many favors y'all can't be having my guys out here like y'all are risking my assets right now Yeah. so like okay okay, I get it we, we, we they have to perform their duties I get it but like you said nah we can't we, can't yeah, we gotta keep them safe we gotta keep them safe keep right. boys safe and the fans gonna fight for it bro well I mean it, it ain't really worked so far but I just I, that's what I think bro if something seriously happens to them bro K-pop fans will, will riot bro there was something that happened this like last week that I feel like every couple of weeks something happens to remind me how crazy like K-pop fans really are. But they were like on Twitter like spazzing because I think it was like a BTS Spotify ad. Somebody noticed like a BTS Spotify ad was running or something like that. And like they were like, oh, you know, like, why is this ad running? You know what I'm saying? Like, Wait, so they didn't like that BTS had ads running? Yeah. Was, was it like a, oh, this is an organic type vibe? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. And so their fans are, so bro, it's like their fans lose it at something as small as that, bro. If something serious were to happen to them, Ooh. it would be crazy. Like I, would, I genuinely feel like that would be enough to start. Like I don't, I don't know, but like some like what, what's it called when like a, a mini civil war? There we go, a civil war. There we go. Yeah, exactly, bro. Be a whole lot of beat up uh, young ladies. Yeah, bro. They gonna be out there in the streets fighting for BTS, bro. Shit, it might be some people up here who who go over there. You know what I'm saying? To help out. <laughs> bro, like I know a lot of K-pop like fans over here. Yeah, exactly. Bro. Home to... <laughs> yeah, bro. I know a lot of K-pop fans who would take over for it. So, yeah. I, so it's like I I, I was looking thinking about what Sam says. Like, all right, you're right. That's gonna be a great narrative for when they come back. That comeback album probably gonna be stupid. Dog. Stupid. It's like going to jail. It is like to go to jail. Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's a good point. Damn, that's a great point. Bro, we know what that does. And going then you, going to jail is practically a rollout plan sometimes. And you don't get the negative stigma that's attached with going to jail. Your record's good. You know what I'm saying? You Girl. know this wasn't your fault. Had nothing to yeah. do with you. Like, yeah. Damn. Damn, that's a good point. Hey, man. But I, I did see, like, what's the, the lead member? Because uh, I think they're, they're they're not all going at the same time. I think they're, they all have, like, different points where they're going to start. Because the oldest member, the lead member, He's not starting his sentence, in, well, not sentence, but he's not. <laughs> start, he's not starting his his service term until he drops his solo project in like October. Well, it is October, so sometime this month, I think it's like a couple weeks. You know, yeah, maybe so right. still getting them leeway. Yeah, but they still got a little power in that situation, let us, bro. Let us get it. I don't know about them. You know, oh, well, somebody. But yeah, yeah you know, 
Yeah, the, the people around them, they got some power. Like, hey, man, again, y'all messing up that investment. Let yeah. us go ahead and exploit to the fullest yeah. as much as we can. And so we can plan, continue to manage this asset as much as possible. It's like, please, bro, let us put please. the album out first. <laughs> like, please, please let us put please. the album out first. Hey, bro, I wouldn't be surprised if they start doing um like some, not VR, what's the word? Not, not, not virtual reality with like hologram, hologram type shows oh, like crazy stuff I hope like not. that I really hope not <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they I would much rather them like do a live stream concert maybe drop some kind of game you know experience or something something that that keeps it like just popping and maybe they have a day a special event during right yeah. so y'all are in service but y'all had this one special day to do like you said a live stream concert because them BTS I can't remember oh man like BTS they've been ahead so long Remember, it was during the pandemic. They were doing virtual shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're they were right. They making yeah. bank. Yeah, that was killing it. Like, I think it was like, it was at least $100 million for, for uh, let me see if I can find this real quick. Virtual concert, uh, money, 2020. And I'm calling it now. When they drop their first picture of them in their uniforms, that shit going to break the internet. I'm calling oh, yeah. it now. It's going to be. Facts. It's going to break Twitter. Facts. I need to make that shit an NFT, you dog. <laughs> So that ain't even the cover art for the next album. BTS cashes in on worldwide streaming concert, earning ninety million in three days. It's crazy. That's thirty million a day for people who bad at math. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on! Wait, and oh snap! I don't even think this was. This is actually not during the pandemic. Oh, this is like recent or something. This says March sixteenth, twenty twenty. Yeah. No, damn. When was the pandemic? There was a pandemic, right? Oh, my bad. Yeah. No, nah, I messed up. 2022. Oh, okay. God. Okay. I was like, wait. Like, <laughs> I was like, what you mean? That's only a few months ago, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so 2022. So I imagine maybe the concert was a few days before that or something. But but yeah, so that's this year. But I would keep that shit up too. Yeah. Because whatever they did during the pandemic, let's see if I can see the pandemic number. Pandemic number real quick. Like, but they need to just go ahead and pre-record a bunch of concerts, plan some live dates. You know what I'm saying? Get that last couple of fan meeting greets in. Maybe drop a, a new merch line. They might as well go and cash out, bro, because it's going to be a – no, I don't think it's going to be a rough two years, but it's going to be interesting not seeing them in the – bro, so many artists about to finally get a chance to, like, shoot to the top, you know what I'm saying, get, to really compete. That's yeah. a big power player been taking out the game, bro. Oh, yeah. Hey, Fash, bro, come get your <laughs> – hey, man, take advantage. The competition is gone. Bro, I know somewhere it's all these K-pop boy bands are like, yes, finally a chance. <laughs> All right, so this, they had a huge revenue from BTS's two-day virtual concert is drawing attention. I should start saying these sources and everything. So this is all K-pop, all right? It looks like a K-pop Reddit or something, or maybe it's a Reddit thread with K-pop branding. But Big Hit Entertainment revealed that a total of 993,000 people logged into BTS's concert, Map of Soul 1, during the two days of the concert, so 993000 over two two days. Considering the minimum ticket price is 49500 49, KRW. I don't know what currency that is. You know, y'all put some game in the chat on that. It's like KRWs. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. That's what I do know. The company has earned more than 50 billion KRWs, right, which is... Let's see what the U.S. revenue I need, is. I, mean, I need to know, man. I got to hit Google real <laughs> quick. I need to know. Yeah. 50 billion KRWs. Let's see if we can get that in revenue. I think. Oh, look. Uh, it's saying. I think it's saying 43 million in U.S. revenue. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's. That's a weird in, in, annotation. But I think it's saying 43 million Forty three five hundred million in K what? Hold up. Forty three million five hundred thousand plus. It's something like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and excuse us for trying to figure shit out, but these numbers are massive. And if y'all don't know about BTS, y'all should really follow them because they're amazing at their brand experience, the way they've been using apps, um, live streaming, and which I don't quite understand why people aren't live streaming like they like you thought would have happened during the pandemic. Yeah. Like people are like, whoo, made it out of that. Let's go back to these shows. Yeah. Like, Y'all are really still missing out on additional uh, revenue. Like Duckworth, where you at, bro? 
Your <laughs> live stream was so fucking hard, bro. That I w- I need to see more. I don't know if you needed like sponsorships and what it take. Of course, the work is the work, my guy. But your shit was amazing. That should have been like at least a once a year of experience, man. I watched that shit with my girl. She didn't even know who you were. And she was like, I'll go watch another one of these things. That was like a date for me, you know, in the <laughs> house. For real, bro. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like these live streams, they could go somewhere creatively if you keep like, like people need to turn those. It's up. just another experience. It's another experience. It's just another experience, bro. It's another experience. <laughs> it's another experience. But you don't have to deal with as much of liability. You know what Nobody I'm gonna throw a phone at you. Nobody gonna throw a phone at you unless you're planning it within the live stream. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they might throw the phone because your live stream is bad, but like that as an additional revenue stream. Like it only asks, especially if you make it an experience, something that's mm. legitimately dope. Which, yeah. in a couple of weeks, I want to talk about Rihanna's uh, fashion show because I think it comes out in a couple of weeks. And I know you still haven't watched one yet, right? Nah. Shit is hard. We're gonna wait to talk about Intergalactic till then too, because I think it's. Oh, whole, I think I watched that too. Yeah. Whole episode to package. Yeah. You know what I'm Put it on my to do list. We starting to theme <laughs> episodes, people. Y'all give us some 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 thoughts, man. We're gonna theme these episodes and talk about certain topics. But BTS, man, shout out to y'all. Uh, you know, free BTS. <laughs> As Jacoria said, y'all sentenced in the military. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about Chris Brown flexing as he's done many times before uh, with another mistaken moment of success because... Because the internet makes those. Right. Because the internet makes those. And you just wake and, up and, and shit and working God out. loves them. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, y'all don't forgive, but God does. Chris Stamp Brown is winning out here in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's 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 up go. Um, this headline right here, bro. Chris Brown drops the official music video for "Under the Influence." Now, "Under the Influence." I don't want to play this for too long. Y'all gonna have to like, you know, yeah, copyright. copyrights. Yeah. So y'all are just gonna Google it. Matter of <laughs> fact, I'm not gonna even play this thing. Let's say that. And "Under the Influence" came out when. Like three years ago. Like three years ago. Yeah. All right. Let's let's see. Chris Brown under the influence. Ooh, put myself on the spot with the type speed, man. And typos. That's bad enough. 2019. So yeah, three years ago. It's, it's 2022. Yeah, right almost now. three years ago. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that right there is crazy. And you said it popped on TikTok. On TikTok, TikTok again, bro. TikTok, TikTok for another for another W. Hey. But like, I don't know the exact moment that made it pop off because it, it did it did feel like out of nowhere it was everywhere. So I honestly don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, it started catching a viral moment on TikTok. Chris caught word of him was like, "Oh, I need to cap on this shit video." Yo, this is no, it's so <laughs> this is beautiful in like 50, 50 11 ways, man. Because like, I'm gonna stop with this one, right? Because you just said this. The music video, you know how our advice basically these days when an artist like, like, oh, I want to create a music video, don't create a music video until the song starts taking off. Yeah. Right? See if people like it first. See if they like it first, right? Because especially for a newer artist, videos are an investment. Yeah. Time, money, good money, especially if you want to do a good video. So just put it in the music, put it in the marketing. If the song moves, the video can be uh, released. And now you have attention to that video naturally because there's already interest in it. Otherwise, you have to market it in a video individually. It's a whole thing, right? So, great. That's that advice. Don't drop a music video until the song itself starts to show some level of popping, right? But I don't think some people realize, even if it takes three years for that shit to pop, (laughs) you know what I mean? I think people are thinking like, yo, well, what about overnight or whatever it would have takes three weeks which one of these are gonna be working in three months but just like with able heart you know and it's funny when it when that song started popping that we were working with him i didn't realize that had been dropped a year uh before yeah was like, oh so the song did maybe thirty thousand streams over a year and then in the next 30 days two million yeah. Three million streams, all right? Because of TikTok, by the way. Because of TikTok, by the way. Because of TikTok, by the way, bro. Y'all be sleeping on TikTok, even though everybody has uh, is also aware. Uh, so, like, my thing, when we first started getting on TikTok, and it was 2019, ironically, when we started going hard on it, 
one of the things I saw early on was Harry Belafonte, Jump on the Line, went viral. All right, you know that song? No. So like Jump on the Line. Okay, yeah, 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 that, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I didn't know that was Harry Belafonte at that time. Um, all, but one thing I did know, I was like, Harry, oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, bro, this thing has the power to take this song got to be 50 plus years old or something. Because I know Harry Belafonte, bro. Like Sidney Portier, you know what I mean? Cicely Tyson, that's the same camp, like yeah. age-wise. That's like my grandma's grandma almost, you know what I'm saying? So, like, to pop off a song from somebody that, oh, that's old, like, anybody's catalog can get it these days, right? If somebody finds it and they put it in the right Video, right? Shit. Anybody's catalog can get these TikTok moments. So, so question then: Do you think the inverse could happen? Do you think an artist could drop a video for an old song and then that sparked the viral moment for us today? And I'll tell you what: What made what made me, makes you makes me ask this is I remember there was once while I was sitting in this clubhouse room with uh, J Cole's marketing team from Dreamville, and they was having this exact argument. Like okay. the the marketer. I wish I could remember this guy's name because I was on his side, but their marketer was like, bro, we 100% could drop old video, well, videos for old songs and just re-spark attention into it because like, you know, if the fans still like it, like the old fans are gonna still support it because they love it and then new people are gonna be like, oh, this shit hard, you know what I'm saying? Let, yeah. let me tap into it. And that. then it was like, you know, J. Cole's like, you know, more executive people on his team were fighting against it. Now we're not putting out a video for an old song. And the market's like, bro, it don't have to be crazy. We can just go take 10 old songs, make, find some little homie that's amazing at the videos, that's charging two, three K for videos. Then we get, you know what I'm saying, $30,000 for 10 videos for some shit and we re-spark it and make it pop off. And I was like, the whole time I'm listening to him, I'm like, bro, he's right. Like that shit, As a J. Cole fan, I'm like, bro, that shit will work, bro. That's some songs I wish he had made some videos for that would definitely have me going back to it. So that's why I asked. Different. But as I'm yeah. saying, do you think like- Yes. yes. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> that is, bro, that is beautiful right there. Yeah. That's, and you said that was one of somebody who's on the marketing team. Yeah, it was like his. I can't. I wish I could remember. Execs, man. Listen yeah. to the young blood. I wish I could remember the guy's name, bro. Yeah, nah, nah, but nah. yeah, that that is a hard idea. One hundred percent. Because to me, that is the entire point of IP. Yeah. Like we have this IP to continue to use this image, you know, name, image, and likeness in different forms and facets over the years and bring new attention to it. Right. I could drop a, a mini series of a TV show and put all my music in, it, and that brings clout back to it so maybe yeah i'm gonna tell the entire story of um not come the warm-up right visually in a way that it wasn't told before yeah. so it might not just be oh a music video one off but it's more in a package fashion where you consume in a high level or it is just a one-off music video but at, like buddy said basically the the risk is so low at that point because the artist is already who they are Fans are 100 gonna uh, percent gonna watch it, so there's no L that you can really take outside of, like you said, the cost and t uh, to, uh, like capital wise, time wise to create the video. Yeah, it was AJ like Cole. You can figure it out. Like yeah, exactly. Like that's actually, no, nah, I think about. I think they did do that. I just remember J Cole either earlier this year or last year did drop like three or four videos for old songs. So I'm assuming that marketer eventually got his point across. Uh, uh, see now, yeah, we gotta we. I don't remember. It was either. Let me I would love to know what those are. We might not have time to dig deep into that for the sake of keep moving, but we're gonna have to come back with that one. Nah, I'm already on his YouTube page. Hold up. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he. Uh, damn, where was it? Uh, no, okay, no, these are all new stuff. Man, I think it might have been last year. Oh yeah, Fire Squad, Lost Ones, and then. Uh, he just redraw old videos. Never mind. I think I think the only one that might have been new video for an older song was Fire Squad. Yeah, see, I gotta, yeah. I don't know, I feel like y'all let us know in the comments. Yeah, I feel like it was others, know. but he but he did it. I feel like that marketer will eventually won. Somebody you know will let us know. Yeah. <laughs> and they they could probably, like I said, just continue to cap and go deeper into that if you if you push it in, in the right way. Yeah. Just do it light. Because I'll, I'm so confused when it comes to J. Cole music videos specifically because there were one or multiple people that were creating really legit j cole videos that weren't real videos yeah for a period of time yeah. i'll be watching them and I'm like dang this should be the video it was a lot of j cole videos that were created like that but that idea of dropping old stuff you're an, uh, an established artist and you drop some old shit well a, a music video for some old shit when you have a bigger fan base yes that's beautiful 
And it's like, even if it's just the art artist, like I didn't have the funds to artistically, you had a story to it. I didn't, I couldn't artistically express it in the way I wanted to. So you actually could have already had a video for it too, by the way. Yeah. It's like, but I wanted to show y'all in the way I really wanted to, to do it. All right. And this is what the vision this is. This is me with money. It's the yeah. vision for me with money. This is me with money, right? This is me with money. So now nah, there's, nah, that's, that's a, a great idea. We can, we can dig in like with that. There's, there's so much that comes from your early work and value for, to that because you know like one the artist that we were working with who's her first album never came out and she was already a, a, a super established artist oh, okay yeah right. right yeah okay yeah this is like <laughs> bro you're if jay-z turned out to have a first album that nobody heard whoever insert anybody who has a name for themselves yeah right now and they're popping considered like top tier if they came out with a first album it's like hey this album didn't come out for whatever reason the story alone will give it the views now hey maybe that music wasn't that good and you came too far so that might but the idea of it we know from a marketing value is going to get traction yeah, at least be a good right? moment maybe a good collectible at least a good collectible <laughs> yeah nft ironic because that's what you know we're working yeah. on, but you know what i mean but you know it is <laughs> it is what it is it is what it is so with that same um that same vein though right we kind of got off to chris brown and that and that thing blowing up want to give quick shout out to t kids take over because they also have a post that is perfect for this topic bam pull this thing up songs that took forever to blow up these hit songs yep took forever to blow up so just to add to it right trap queen says it took 18 months look at me by x two years murder on my mind i didn't realize it was two years for that no yeah yeah murder on my mind two years i didn't realize it was two years yeah, for that yeah. lucid dream 17 months yeah. i knew that yeah yeah and then roses four years nah i definitely that was the one i didn't know i was like hmm oh shh whatever hey <laughs> hey it is what i think uh i mean we know lma's boot up yeah. Because that was one of those things where I actually knew the song and I was confused because it came up and I was like, I, I, I thought I knew this song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, it, it happens so often, especially these days. Like, yeah, bro, it's like as long as that song is out there, you all, it always got a shot. Always got a shot. Always got a shot. Like I say, man, great content never dies, right? Yeah. Especially if it's never had its moment yet. Yeah. So, hey, man, like, y'all got hope. Y'all got hope, and maybe y'all will be dropping music videos. That's an even better way. If you really feel stressed about not being a creative video, no. Hey, when you get big one day, you can yeah. drop that video in. Yeah, go back. Go back. Go back. Now, next, Taylor Swift going indie. So I don't even have anything to read or story um, to really show on this, but we had known Taylor Swift going indie. Like, she was re-recording her albums and they were like yo we gotta rewrite the whole like bible yeah. and music because yeah. we can have new people doing this yeah, like she fucked the game she, up she, she really fucked she the game fucked up the game i don't up. think y'all understand how much she really fucked it up and i've seen other artists do it too around that same time but she's obviously the biggest one and then you become the example and they're like yeah yo 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 we gotta stop this train so um her re-recording her stuff did it did that write out before we get into the indie indie stuff, like, do, do you know of her re-recording her stuff completely, like, right out to other owners? Like, hey, this is completely different music. Because she was just literally re-recording the same song for y'all who don't know, right? And when she, she re-recorded that same song, do I now have no ownership of the new version? Yeah, like, as the label, yeah. Like, she owns it. I mean, you know, you still got to get, like, credit for right, the right. artistic credit purposes. Yeah, 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 but, like, yeah, like, no ownership of it. Because it's technically a new body of work. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's crazy, bro. That's such a that was such a big brain finesse at the time. Cause I I don't I don't know who came up with that idea. I know I would have never thought of it, but that shit was wild. That, bro, that shit was genius. And so she re released a couple, and I guess after she got those out, right, and then she started giving her stuff more support. And now, her latest project, if you go to Spotify, you look at the name where you usually see the labels, the companies that are behind this thing. It just says Taylor Swift. T dot. Hey. <laughs> Taylor owns her own thing and not I don't think y'all understand how ridiculous this is but it's not just Taylor right so we talked about Bad Bunny Sam like put me on the central seat 
I didn't know Central C was independent. Yeah, me either. That was that was that one was random. That one that one yeah. was pretty random, especially the love of artist he is right now. But I maybe just he's popping. He popped fast before it happened. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta. I still gotta look more into Central C's story. Yeah, I mean, he was popping. He was he was doing really well actually before he had his TikTok moment. Right, I knew he was yeah. doing well for yeah. sure because yeah. I already knew who he was. But I just don't. I I, didn't, I mean, I didn't really realize how well, how much better he started doing though from that moment. Yeah. I thought it was a song that I fucked with. I, he was one of those artists where I just didn't look at the numbers for a while. Yeah. And I looked at his numbers. I was like, oh, he, he going stupid yeah, right bro. now. Yeah. yeah. So if you take him, Bad Bunny, Taylor Swift, and them being indie, that's going to change the game. Like, it's or it's, it's symbolically, right? You look here, and then you look five years from now. The game is going to look very, very different. Yeah. I think Taylor Swift is going to be more impactful, though. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because I think it's the... The thing I think we see w- with the indie game is everybody's waiting on or was waiting on like the big, massive, used to be major label artists to come along and prove that it could be possible. And none of them were willing to do it. Bad Bunny's cool because Bad Bunny's been, you know, indie from ground up. But, you know, it, well, he didn't just become massive, but he's not, he hasn't been around as long as Taylor Swift. But Taylor Swift is this person that was once a product of the machine, once had, you know, um, the help of the machine, and she took that leap. And but the article I was showing you right before this, but her numbers are bigger than they were when she was a part of the machine. Like she, she's only comp- she. It's a real me versus me situation with with Taylor Swift, and it's like what was that article? Uh, it was like line? it was a uh, Taylor Swift. The is the first person to do a million albums in a week since Taylor Swift in 2017. That's a <laughs> wild headline, bro. That's such a crazy headline. Look. It's like a real, like I said, a real me versus me situation. So I'm, I'm thinking that there has to be other major artists looking at her and going like, damn, she didn't skip a beat, even though you know what I'm saying. She's any like she, she did better, you know what I'm saying. Actually, like she's not, she didn't even fall off, and she hit so many of the core things we talk about. It's like you know she has a really strong narrative. She's come out that school to burn situation. She got her negative viral moment right now. You know what I'm saying. That's that's been crazy on Twitter for the last couple of days. People talking about this video she dropped. Saying she's like fat shaming and everything, so she got a negative moment around her. She she has a narrative around her. Yeah, no, nah, that shit that shit's been it's, it's been a wild couple of days on Twitter um, because of that. You know, she got the she tell us so she definitely got the resources, but she mm-hmm. calling probably calling the DSPs like, yo, we got Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, when that shit coming out Friday? All right, bet you you in it? You you good, right? So she's proven you can keep the same level of relationships, yep. or somebody around you at least somebody can keep yep. the same level of relationships. And so I'm hoping it makes other artists go like, oh, okay, cool. Like, well, not other artists, but like other big artists go like, oh, yeah, so that shit is possible. Yeah, let's do it. I wonder if Drake's looking like, mm. No, nah, I don't think so. Mm, maybe I should have. It's contract poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Drake gonna stay in the contract, bro. <laughs> uh, that's not his part of the game. I want to monetize <laughs> no, in a no. different space. I, you know, I can see that because Drake has so many aspirations beyond music. Yeah. He does. He doesn't have to look at music for his value as much. He doesn't act, have to exploit it as much. All right. He can share more of that pie. When you look at um, baby, right? Like music is. Hey, that's where we getting it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they got some real estate, all that other stuff. But you know, it's not the same as like Jay Z, who I'm playing all these other brand deal games and partnerships, and you know, playing that level. We are going to exploit and keep going. That's probably why they've been the ones who have lasted and lasted and lasted and been hot. Like A&R, like how many people, I mean, like Thug, they were on Thug and Rich Homie early on. Yeah. Was mainly Thug, right? Um, who else? I mean, they were. I know they were connected with Blueface through, um, yeah, uh, Blueface, the rapper. Yeah, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It was somebody, it was, there, there's a, there's a, a, a through line there. They're, they are on it, bro. Yeah, baby, them that they, they, their system is tight. Oh wait, yes I did because he was signed to like um, Cash Money West or something, something like or, that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't know that. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Nah, man. I mean, and we know the the, the Drake and Lil Wayne, and, uh, Nikki, Nikki, all that stuff. Tiger. Uh, they're like, <laughs> yeah, Tiger. <laughs> 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 well, get, hey, hey, bro, gotta keep that respect on Tiger name because that man be hitting in, in, in Cali. Yeah, man, when he want to hit, bro, he want hey, one, man. If y'all don't <laughs> feel that, if there's someone in Cali who doesn't feel that way, all I can say is my personal experience. When I went to Cali uh, one year when I was in Cali, I was like, yo, like, Tiger, like, people really fucking with Tiger out here. This this music really playing, playing out here. I don't, I don't hear him. 
you know, where I'm yeah. from. But <laughs> out here, like, and but in California, California, Texas, right? They have new two states where you can just stay in that state and you can do crazy numbers. Yeah. Right? Because it's so, so big. But, you know, shout out to Tiger. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but back, but back, <laughs> back to the point. They, yeah, cash money, they make their money in music. For real, for real. Drake, of course he's made money in music. But I, I think the path that he wants to go, I can see, I can see him staying contract pack, Poppy. You right, you yeah, right. bro. I'm fine. Contract ego, Poppy, though. bro. What about ego? Just saying, man, I could be doing it that way. I could have a bigger piece of the pie. I could just, you know, I'm still Drake. I got the name. People are gonna want to connect to me. Yeah. I still have high level execs that are highly skilled pushing for me. But I, I feel like it's different when you know that there are other people that are just as invested as you are in keeping that name as big as it is. And it's like, that's a hard machine to put together by yourself. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, you already have this building of people that are like, bro, you Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to they gonna make sure Drake shit work out. Yeah. So I can understand not wanting to step away from that situation. Yeah. Unless it's like, you feel like it's really, really lucrative. Or I, I really feel like Taylor did it because there's probably a message behind it. Like, look at how I was, you know, wronged by one of the biggest music executives <laughs> in the world and look at my, look at me bounce back. Cause Taylor's whole story is, is always been like, you know, like look at me overcome kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not really Drake's narrative. Drake's narrative, well, not, it has, or at least it hasn't been for a long time. Drake's narrative hasn't been look at me overcome probably since the first album. Now it's look at me dominate, look at me stay on top. Yeah. And I feel like he probably feels like in order to keep that narrative going, he got to stay in the major label system. That's interesting. Can Drake afford to take a real L? I think so. Uh, in his brand. Oh, in the brand? Yeah, in, in his brand. Because like you said, Taylor has had, I'm overcoming, right? Yeah. What have we seen Drake overcome? We had the one moment where him and Meek, right? And uh, he won that. Right? Yeah. So there was never, and it, the battle didn't end up, it was, it was, it felt so one-sided in that moment. It does, it didn't look like, you know, Drake could take any L's, period. So, we haven't seen Drake take a legit L since he's been Drake, and mm. then come back from it. Yeah, I mean, what well, that was? Which album was it? It was either Views of Scorpion that didn't do that great. I can't remember which one it was. It didn't do that great. That that was a little chink in the armor. You know what I'm saying? It's a chink in the armor, but I don't. It sucks. So it's weird to say this in music, but I don't feel like a bad album is. It's an L. It's an L. Yeah. If your catalog is good enough. If your catalog is yeah. already there, yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is for Drake we're talking about, right? <laughs> okay, You're yeah. There enough of you that and you still got it's like that album almost disappears because your st shit is still playing. We still hear all your great songs yeah. and you're yeah. still coming out with other new songs that we're still hearing. We forget that there's just other songs that you came out with that we don't respect like that or he, you know, mess with like that. I I don't know. I, I think he could he could he could take a L. I think it'd be interesting to see Drake take it because, like, I don't know. He, I mean, he doesn't really have the like. I guess he still has like the biggest rapper narrative going on. Yeah. Which, yeah, he does, but he's not the biggest. Well, like, we don't. Nobody thinks Drake is the biggest artist in the world, but he compete with Tyler Switch is in a million in a week, bro. There's no way he could think that. <laughs> Bad Baby out here yeah. dropping multiple albums, breaking records. There's no way he thinks. Oh, Brad, yeah. Um, not bad, bad baby, bad bunny. Bad bunny, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, bad baby. I made, I made a mistake. <laughs> uh, I was on a Google search. I actually searched bad baby, and I was looking for bad bunny. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, bad bunny's numbers are stupid. Literally, like, I remember the charts. It almost looked like it was double Drake streams a day. Yeah. And you're talking about bad bunny being indie. Now he's indie where he owns the label that he's signed to. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his percentage is, but he owns something significant. And then they are with Republic, I believe. They're in business with Republic. Yeah, I think so. Like, so that's something that y'all could look, look. Hey, if there's more artists, that was the Nipsey approach, what he wanted to do. That's what Nip, uh, Russ has done, right? Like, I'm going to build my shit up, and then I'm going to do JV's, distro deals, things like that. It's just that the scale that Bad Bunny is doing it on is like. It's global. Shit. <laughs> I mean. Like, bro, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't even seem possible that he could be, like, in that type of situation. Yeah, bro, he's a, a very unique case. I don't think we're going to see another case like him for another three to five, at least. At least. Man. <laughs> Man, yeah. We got to dig in deeper than, uh, in the Bad Bunny. For real. For real. I, I'm not going to touch. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, shoot. You know, we don't even got time for Yeah, I was about to say, what time we got that meeting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got that meeting at 12, and I got to hop on this uh, other call. So, we're going to end the pod for the day. <laughs> <laughs>
Appreciate y'all staying tuned. As y'all see, we try to make it better and better, learn more and more. Love y'all's feedback. Appreciate the love y'all have been giving us. Um, the best thing that y'all could do for us at the moment, if y'all want to show love and support other than liking and commenting and all that good stuff, of course, we love that. But just watch another video. Give us some watch time on the YouTube channel. Let that watch time go and up actually, so we get more send videos. us videos. Like, if you see something you feel like we oh, need to talk about, facts. DM it to Sean. Ooh, we're going to have to come up with a DM. Because <laughs> uh, I, I don't want that organization <laughs> drop. Send it to Sean. <laughs> Let's say this. Follow No Labels Necessary on Instagram. <laughs> And <laughs> and definitely DM a topic if y'all like for real though. We'll have somebody sitting there and like organize and try to like position topic. We would love to actually have some topics that y'all push in. We'll, shoot, we'll give y'all credit, shout y'all out, yo. Yeah, you know, all that good stuff. So um, yeah, thanks for tuning in for another episode, episode three. No labels necessary. This is Sean. This is Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.